Booked, the bookstore education podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. This episode is part of our Indies Introduced series, where we spotlight debut authors handpicked by booksellers from around the country. In each episode, a bookseller from the Indies Introduced panel will interview the author of a debut title featured in our program. Hi, my name is Lily Taliaferro, and I am the Children's Department Manager and Buyer at Eagle Harbor Book Company on Bay Ridge Island, Washington. Um, today, I am joined with by Kalela Williams, author of the young adult novel Tangle Root, which comes out on October 15th. Um, before we get into it, let me tell you a little bit about Kalela. Kalela Williams has always loved books, cats, and history. As a child, she began scrawling stories in marbled composition books. As a teenager, she'd blow out her birthday candles and wish for a greater light to illuminate history through fiction, which makes her debut novel, Tangle Root, literally a dream come true. Kalela has made a career in literary events, directing everything from the citywide read program One Book, One Philadelphia, to the Virginia Festival of the Book. Originally from Atlanta, Georgia, Kalela now lives in the central Virginia town of Stanton with her partner with whom she runs a story-centered organization, The Off Center. Welcome, Kalela. Hello. Thank you. It's so exciting to get to chat with you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, same, same. Um, so how about to start us off, do you want to give us an elevator pitch, basically, of what Tangle Root is all about? Yes, absolutely. So Tangle Root is the story of a young woman, um, Noni Reed, who moves from Boston into a small central Virginia town, um, into a home that her enslaved ancestor built. And she is living with her mom, who she does not get along with, vast understatement. And through the process of living in this home that her enslaved ancestor built, she learns the history of the house and she learns the history of her town. And she learns a little bit more about her mom, but she also uncovers some family secrets along the way that really shake up everything she thought she knew. So this is a story of discovery and it's a story of her looking into history and finding out more than she realized she would find. It was so fascinating to read all about the history, and there clearly was a lot of thought and work that went into it. Um, what was your writing process like, sort of in terms of research? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, you know, when you're writing something that gets so deep into history, um, I felt like I owed it to the book, I owed it to my readers, and I owed it to the past to do my due diligence. And so um, the research was pretty was pretty intensive. Um, I spent a lot of time in archives. Um, I spent a lot of time in um, the Library of Virginia, for instance, and the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Um, I looked at a lot of primary sources. And of course, those are documents that are um, part of a time period um, written within a contemporary time period, such as newspaper articles, letters, diaries. Um, I read a lot of voices from the 19th century and sometimes even the 18th century, just to give me some context. Um, so um, there was a lot that went into it, but it was fascinating. Um, sometimes I thought I had something and and then I discovered more. Um, and I felt a little bit like Noni Reed must have felt just sort of discovering more and more and more as you go along. Yeah. Was honing in on the importance of that sort of ancestral history an essential step while writing? It was. Um, Noni discovers her ancestral history. While she's looking into the history of this house, um, she's discovering more about who she is based on the people who came before her. Um, she's she's reading about and, and, and hearing the voices of her ancestors. Um, and, and to me, um, I've always been fascinated with my own genealogy. And this was... Um, this was a way for me to sort of live vicariously through someone fictional um, who's who's really going on a deep dive. Um, in real life, of course, history never, when we're researching it, it never quite answers the questions maybe as fully as as, as Noni's experience. Um, we get a lot of dead ends or a lot of things that we don't have an answer to quite yet. That's how that's how history research works. But um, but in her case, she does have questions, um, and there are some things that are left unanswered, but she also really discovers um, a lot that she just never knew that informs who she is. And so I felt that that was really um, important, but also it was it was fun to write. Mm -hmm. In 
Noni sort of finding out who she is, did you also find out more about yourself in like while writing and sort of connecting Noni and yourself? Yeah, I think so. Um, and that's a really interesting question because Noni's story isn't my story. Um, none of this ever happened to me. But, you know, even when you're not writing about you, you're always writing about you. And I think that, you know, Noni doesn't always get things right. She doesn't always get her friendships right. She doesn't always get her um, her her interpretation of experiences right. And she sort of has to sort of go back and really understand where things are. And And I felt like, this was an opportunity for me to to think about things that maybe I, I haven't gotten right or, or or didn't get right in the past and and learn to get right. Um, and so I think that that's that's sort of something that um, that that really gave me an opportunity to discover some things about myself. Yeah, that so that leads me into my next question of what was sort of your inspiration? What made you want to write this story in particular? Yeah. Um, when I was about 13 years old, I went to um, I went to a 4-H camp. I was in 4-H, and I um, the camp was located near an old plantation um, on the grounds of an old plantation, and I went to the burial ground that had once been um, that had once been a burial ground of of an enslaved community, and I thought that I would see tombstones with names and dates. And instead, it was just a wooded area, very quiet, very peaceful, a few depressions in the ground, um, but there were no tombstones, there were no names, you didn't know who was there. Um, there were unmarked rocks, pilings of rocks, but there was there was no there were no inscriptions, and it it, it struck me. It struck me because I wanted to give names and stories to the people who had lived and toiled here and died here. Um, I wanted them to have names and stories. And of course I, I, I will maybe never find that out, right? But not not for not for this community, but there's so many other communities. And I wanted to, in this case, I, I made a fictional community and, um, and I wanted this fictional community to live. And so that, that experience when I was 13 years old really made me, it, it, it really sort of developed um, over the years, and it and it became part of other experiences that I've had um, as a young adult. Um, this this book was years in the making, um, decades in the making, even, and so um, it it sort of catalyzed and crystallized into what Tangle Root is. Wow, you can totally tell that it is a long time coming, and that you feel so much passion for it. Um, if there was one thing that you want people to take away from reading Tangle Root, what, what do you want them to take away from it? I would want people to take away that um, there are so many unnamed people who came before us, um, unnamed in the sense of history, unnamed in the sense of looking back. We will never know their names. Um, we will never know their stories. But they had stories and they had names and they had families and they loved and they they survived and 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 when they didn't survive they they left a mark whether we can see that mark or whether we think we can see that mark or not there's a mark left and so i want people to take away the importance of history and history isn't just dates and facts on paper history is often the unseen it's often the unknown it's what we can maybe never ever know but if we know if we know how a person might have lived, if we know, for instance, um, as Noni discovers, some of the particulars of enslavement, of being enslaved, then in some way we know we know these stories. This is the way that we can uncover these stories: is to do our due diligence and um, and 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 read and learn and understand. And I'll also add, um, other writers have said this too: that when I researched Tangle Root. I wasn't sneaking into old buildings and looking through people's, you know, file cabinets. I wasn't, you know, tiptoeing around. Do, do, do. I was going to publicly accessible archives. I was doing the kind of work that anybody could walk in and do. Sometimes you have to make an appointment, but um, but I wasn't doing anything special. Um, I was I was reading what we all could, what we all have access to. 
I love that. What a what a great way to sort of end us and wrap us up. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you to everyone else who is listening. Um, please go and grab your copy of Tangle Root on October 15th. You're going to love it. And believe me, it will stay with you and you will continue to think about it for months, weeks, however long. Gosh, thank you. Thank you. I, this was such a great, great opportunity. And I'm just very excited about Tangle Roots launch. Thank you for listening to Book to the Bookstore Education Podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. Additional educational resources can always be found on the ABA website at www.bookweb.org. Happy reading!